very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah, I know, we were this is recording. Oh, is it? Okay. Is, uh, we may not have internet. I was hoping to do this live. Oh, That's okay. It doesn't have to be live. It's up to you. Well, uh, if, it, if it does it, it does it. If it does it, you don't. Plain and simple. Yeah. It's okay. All right. So we're back in the gospel of John still. John. Okay. We're at we left off in verse 18. Oh, well, we're not John right? 18. 1. With the no one has seen God at the bottom. Yeah, John 1. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We're going to go through the Bible like we do. Moving Slow around. and careful. There you go, yeah, because he needs that because he's a beginner. So we've, done, we've learned much the Bible a couple of days ago. from yeah, the last what time. Is yeah. that you're not used to we learned about Jesus the Creator, which many, people, many Christians don't know. I mean, Jesus Christ, part of the Godhead, was also the Creator. And just, because I'm, I'm working right now, in my research right now, is if you, if you believe in evolution, you deny Jesus Christ. Well, Serious thing. You've got to believe in God, and God is Jesus. God so let's pray. I think you can believe in Jesus. Lord God, the Father has asked you to bless this time. Help us with one ball, Lord God. The Bible says we're two or three are gathered yeah. together. Here you are, Lord. Welcome to be here with us, Lord, and be with me as we open your scriptures and look at your word. And to you, be the honor, Lord, for Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. So, John 1.18. Sorry. Right. Yeah. You'll be okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No man has seen God at any time. I'll be back at the only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Now that's an interesting statement. That no one has seen God. Amen. So what do you do first off the bat? When somebody comes up to you and says, Well, I've seen God. The Bible says you're a liar. You're a liar. I'll call you a liar by the Bible. Because the Bible says, look at John 5, John chapter 5, verse 37. John 5, 37. And again, 37. Oh, yes, again. I'm going to throw it out. John 5, 37. Jesus speaking, the Father, that's God. So we're going to take our word from what Jesus said. Never mind what I said, what Jesus said. The Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. He had neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And it's quite interesting because he's talking to the nation of Israel. The children of Israel on Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19 heard God speak, but they didn't see God. And throughout the scripture you say, you know, God spoke to this prophet, God spoke to this man, God spoke to him. God can be heard, but Jesus said, no shape. And we already read that in John chapter 1, John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 7. So, when we get to heaven, John 14 said, when we get to heaven, and whether, whether you know, we go in the rapture, or if we die, be absent from the body and presence of the Lord, we're not going to see a physical presence of God. When we get into New Jerusalem, we're not going to see a physical presence. You're not going to see a shape. So already, you can't say, well, you know, I can't wait till I see God. God has no shape. And we'll keep on reading. John 14, 7. If you had known me, you should have known my Father, God. And also, also and from henceforth, ye know him, and have seen him. 
Wait a minute, I thought Jesus, I thought the Bible said you can't see God. Now we're going to attack, we're going to attack the Jehovah Witnesses again. And you know what Jesus just said? He's standing there, he's talking to a bunch of Pharisees, Sadducees, and the nation of Israel. He said, Henceforth, you know who God is. I've, 13 chapters I've talked to you and more. I've given you the revelation of God. I've given you the kingdom of God. I've given you God's words. And then he says, you have seen him. And yet we have read scriptures where it says, you can't see him. What is Jesus saying? When you're looking at Jesus, you're looking at God. Now, that's not a clear revelation to kick the Jehovah Witness in the butt. Jesus right there said, when you, when you see me, you see God. So if Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus, then Jesus is lie. So when we get to glory and we get to New Jerusalem, we're going to see Jesus and that's God, but there's also going to be that presence of light. Because God is light. But we're not going to see a shape of God. And then when we do see a shape of God, it's going to be Jesus Christ who was manifested in the flesh for mankind. Same chapter, chapter 14, verse 9. Jesus says unto him, so this is Jesus. Have I been so long with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Now look what Philip said in verse 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Verse 9, we're looking at. Philip says, okay, let's see God. I want to see Him. Wouldn't you say that? Wouldn't you? Hey, let's see what God looks like. That's nothing wrong with Philip's question. Jesus answered, verse 9, Have I been so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that seen me, Jesus, has seen the Father God. What do you do with a Jehovah Witness? Well, God's not Jesus. They're not. Jesus did say, out of the word of his mouth, you got a red letter Bible, which this one is. Out of the mouth of God, Jesus. You want to see the Father? Look at me. And the Bible declares to us when we do see Jesus, He's going to look like that human body that He was here. He's still got the, the nails in His feet and the nails in, in His hands and the hole in His side. And when we look at Jesus, we see God. We can take the... And stop kicking and, and hitting Jehovah's Witnesses. They have told me to their face, and they have explained to me, their elders and whoever they are, and all their people, Jesus is not God. Philip asked a question like any of us would have. I want to see God. And Jesus said, you're looking at him. And if a Jehovah Witness or anybody doesn't believe that, then I can't do nothing with you because that's what the Scriptures say. Now, when we get to glory, there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're all three, but they're one and three, but they're individual, but they're different. They're all in unity. What are we going to see when we get to glory? I have absolutely not know. But I'm going to see a bodily human figure that is my Savior. And Jesus said, when you look upon me, Philip, when you look upon me, you're looking at God. And that's where people have problems. So when you have somebody that says Jesus is not God, that is a serious myth. And you are in serious trouble. So when one of the minor prophets, I forget which one it is, when he said, Prepare to meet thy God. And if you've never believed on Jesus Christ and you've heard about Jesus, you're going to face God one day. And that God is going to have the nail prints in his hands and his feet and his side and he's suffering for you. 
imagine someone, whoever, Jehovah Witness, imagine them saying that Jesus is not God and they're going to stand before Jesus one day and they made something, they something like Philip. Well, let's see God. Is it Jehovah Witness? Yes. I am God. They have been seriously deceived. Now, the Jehovah Witness movement, I hate. But, like Ron, too, when we meet individual Jehovah Witnesses, we'll try to give them the truth. We'll try to tell them, hey, listen, you're in error. Your organization in error. This is what the Bible. And this is one of the great verses of John chapter 14. When you look at me, you're looking at God. That is not my mouth. That is John chapter 14, verses 7, 8, and 9. And if you outright still believe that Jesus is not God, you are in serious trouble. And you know what? Many Christians don't even know that. That is sad. Now, I don't know what the first words I'm going to say when I see Jesus one day, but, oh God, yes. <laughs> Jesus took... Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and Jesus never rebuked him. That's the verse I give to Jehovah's Witnesses all the time. And they'll get angry, and they'll, if they could, they'll shoot and kill me right then and there. But Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and Jesus, yep. Philip, show me God. There I am. Now, if I were to say that, I am a liar, I am a hypocrite, and you need to stone me. If anybody else says, well, look at me, I'm, I'm God, and there's plenty of fruitcakes out there. No. The one that's seated at the right hand of the Father right now, that's the one that looks like God. So John chapter 1, so back to John chapter 1, verse 1. Louis says, well, let's, let's go back to John 1, 1 again. We are. <laughs> as far as what we're looking at, as far as the study. In the beginning, we saw that matches Genesis 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. The Word, capital W, was with God. And the Word, capital W, was God. Throw that one on the Jehovah Witness. And they'll, yeah, they'll frick, laugh, good, good, and they've done it. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him, Jesus, was anything was not anything made that was made. In Him is life. Where's my eternal life? Jesus. What did John 1-1 just say? Jesus is God. And I'm not picking on the Jehovah Witnesses, but when we get to verse 18 again, <coughs> no man has seen God any time. But they seen God when he was born in Bethlehem, laying in the manger. There's God. They seen God 13 years old when he's at, or is it 12? I forget. 12 or 13 when he's at the temple and he's talking to the doctor. Like, wow, this guy knows a lot. And at 30 years old, he shows up and gets baptized. There's God. Behold, the Lamb of God. That's God. And anybody ever refuse? The testimony that Jesus Christ is not God. Anybody who says that is not right, that's not that Jesus is not God, you are going against the scriptures. I will say to my dying day that Jesus is God. I just laid it out for the scriptures. That Jesus is God. And to God's glory. And when I say Jesus is God, I am not giving God any last authority for that sort of goes on the side. And if Jesus is God, and Acts 20:28 20, says that that blood that was shed on Calvary's cross was God, and it did, God suffered and died for me on that cross. God, Jesus Christ, is my Savior. And there are people teach out there that are not the same. Yes, they are. That's why the Bible says don't even invite them in your house. 
They're devils. That's almost bad as saying, God, you eat a, eat a cookie, you can eat them. That's bad. He's not, God is not a cookie. And, and you know, if you're going to deal with a Catholic, you know, if this is Jesus Christ. Show me the ingredients. And I want to see the ingredients. I want to see Jesus Christ. You're not going to find, you're going to find salt, wheat, or whatever they make those cookies out of. You ain't going to see Jesus. So back to John 1.18. No man has seen God at any time. Well, that's a contradiction. Well, Jesus hasn't shown up yet. He's coming on scene. And the, the preparation of the Gospel of John is here comes Jesus. You're now going to see God. And guess what? He's not Italian. He's Jewish. He's short, brown, skinned. And he may have a Jewish people, and this is no disregard to Jews. They have what he knows. Christians are going to see Jesus one day and they're going to be like, well, it's not the Hollywood Jesus. Because he's not Hollywood. Catholics are going to say, well, that's not the Jesus because he's not Italian. He's Jewish. Brown skin. And there are people who paint Jesus black and then it, pop it out no, too black. And one day we're going to look like Jesus in heaven, we're going to be brown skin. So it ain't the white race. It ain't Black Lives Matter. It's the race that people hate, the Jewish people. And Jesus Christ is God. So no man has seen God any time, the only begotten Son. What's that statement mean? No man has seen God any time, but the only begotten Son. God, there it is. So you want to do conflict with the Jehovah? This remember John chapter one. Oh. You don't need to get into because they're not going to get by John chapter one. I don't know what their Bible say. I don't care what their Bible say. Because I'm going to show you the truth. If you're going to deny the truth, I don't want anything to do with you. So only begotten Son. That, that goes back to God which is in the bosom of the Father. Right there in the right hand of the Father. Right there on the throne of God is Jesus. Who is God. Now you cannot explain the Trinity. I can't explain the Trinity. The well-known scholars of the Bible cannot explain the Trinity. They're three, but they're one, but they're three, but they're one. <laughs> maybe when we go home to glory one day, maybe God will be able to explain it. Maybe not. Some things it's okay to say it in the Bible. I don't know. That's the best answer. He has declared him. Jesus declared the Father. This is the record of John. This would be John the Baptist. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? Now this is John the Baptist. This is not the writer... Apostle John is explaining now the forerunner. The record would be documentation. We want to see John the Baptist's credentials. We want to see his diploma. We want to see his fingerprints. We want to see the stuff that hangs on the wall. Really? I've seen doctors don't know nothing. I just recently had a doctor I, 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 with an ear infection, and they gave me medication, they gave me medication, medication. I almost killed myself. You can take that stuff that's on the wall and you can, you can use it to flush your toilet. I know, just because you got a piece of paper. God uses the, the, the little of the people. We don't use the bright, smarty people. He uses the people, you know what, Lord, I'm nothing. Why are you using me? You're nothing. You're humble. That's why I'll use you. So when they're looking for the record, they want they want the credentials of John. Again, John is John the Baptist and the Jews. Let's set forth Matthew, let's set forth Mark, let's set forth Luke, and let's set forth John. And park the book of Acts. It is the writings of the Jewish people until they stoned Stephen in Acts chapter 7 
there's very little Gentile people. Some. But it's not the Gentiles. Jesus came onto his own. His own was Jewish. His mother was Jewish. Mary's lineage of, of, of Luke chapter 3 goes all the way back to Abraham. Gentiles only get in when the Jews rejected Stephen. And then they go to Cornelius. And then they go to the Ethiopian eunuch. And then Paul comes, the missionary, to the Gentiles. You know what's wrong? When churches start quoting the book of Matthew, that's Jewish. It's not Gentile. Now, John is a good Gentile book because John's gospel we're studying now was written later. John has the revelation of Paul. John has heard about the church. John has been given what Paul has been given. John has been given the revelations of the book of Revelation. Not Matthew, not Luke, not Mark. That's why I stick to John. And if you're going to go with the book of Matthew, especially, which churches do, that's Jewish. You can't go in there in the church and say, okay, everybody, we're going to do, on, we're going to do what the book of Matthew says. I'm saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's the gospel. That's why I'm going all over the world and preach the gospel. I go down to the farmer's market. Jesus suffered and died, and he was buried, and he arose again the third day. If you believe on that, you can be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can be saved. At what point in Matthew does Jesus suffer and die? At the end. At the end. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are really not... The New Testament, though your Bible says it. Because a testament, you've got to have somebody die. Now, I've had two wives die on me. And their testament, their last will of testament, is not in force until they die. Other than that, it sits in the Bible cabinet. i got a will right now. You can't do nothing with my will until I die. Salvation of the Jews is after the death of Jesus. After they buried him, and then after the three days according to the scriptures, he rose again. That's what we're to preach and teach. So they're coming forth, the, and the Pharisees, are the ones that will give Jesus the hard time. They're already giving John the Baptist the hard time, and the scriptures tell you in Isaiah, I'm sending my forerunner. This is the man to prepare Jesus already. They're giving the forerunner the hard time. And here's a particular note if you want to know. Because it says the priest. All priests are Levites. Well, that rules out the Catholic Church. That rules out the, the Episcopalians. Those are Gentiles. But not all Levites are priests. The priests come from the Levites, but all Levites are not priests. Where do you get from that? You have to be born of Aaron family, which is of the Levites. The specific priest of God in the Bible, we're going to look at in a moment. That's what we're going to look at today. They have to come of Aaron. Aaron came of the family of Levites. The priests have to be of Aaron. Now, the, the, the brothers, the Levites, they can do service in the temple. They can bake the bread, they can do it, but they can, there's things they can't do. Now, put it straightforward, what some people today is, in order to have all to be in America, you have to be an American. Okay, you should be American. I should say that. But there are people in America who are not American. They're maybe here visiting, they're here in scholarship, they're, and they don't get all the privileges of being an American. Like, if you want to be president of the United States, you have to be a citizen born. Alright, so, so all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. Everybody in America, they may not be American. So, Exodus 28.1, and we're going to look at the priesthood. 
Genesis, Exodus. And like I said, when we're doing the Gospel of John, we're going to get it off. Don't think we're going to hit chapter 2 right away. We're going to take what verse we learn, and we're going to learn what the verses say. I'm in no rush for the Scripture. We'll break down every scripture and we'll look at what everything... I mean, we just read about the priest. Well, why move to verse 20 if you don't know what the priests are? They're in the Bible. And we're going to find the priests coming back over and over and over again. And we're like, who are they? Let's learn who they are. In Exodus 28.1, And take thou unto thee Aaron, thy brother, talking to Moses, Aaron and Moses were brothers, and his sons with him, Aaron's sons, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me God in the priest's office, even Aaron and Nadab and Abihu, they'll die soon, Eliezer, Ithamar, Aaron's sons. So the priest would have to be a Eliezer or Ithamar. They have and by who will die without children. So walk up to Mr. Father such and such and say, okay, which child of Aaron are you from you? Oh, you're, you're Italian? You're German? That don't fit. Get out of my face. You're not a priest. According to God, according to the scriptures, according to the law, you have to be of Aaron. You gotta be of the seed of Aaron. You don't have any priests know that. And then you got another problem the Bible says, call no man your father. I love doing that one with the priest. You know, somebody would say, you know, this is father, son. I say, excuse me, sir, the Bible says call no man your father. Mr. S what's your name? Mr. What? I'm not going to do what the Bible tells me not to do. Who do you think you are? The biblical priests are of Aaron. Moses was a priest, but he, he's the one that set it all up. And God passes on to Aaron. Aaron comes from the tribe of Levi. Genesis 46, 11. Genesis 46, 11. Listen, religion is the biggest fool that makes fools out of idiots. I'll take religion on any day with a King James Bible. And I have. I get Jehovah's Witnesses so mad at me and I enjoy it. I had the Jehovah's Witnesses at their compound one day threaten to call me cops on me. Get out of here. Call the, Wait a minute. You come to our doors. We don't call the cops on you. And they told me, if you don't leave, I'm calling the cops. And I got that all on video. I said, thank you very much. I want people to get that video. Jehovah's Witnesses calling the cops. Can you visit their door? I go to their house. I go to their place of work. Genesis 46, 11. Rachel and I was talking today, funny. My grandma used to say, when your ears hurt, somebody's talking about you. That's why I got an ear infection. Many people were talking about me. <laughs> Including Christians. That's why I got an ear infection. The sons of Levi. Gershon, Kohath, Merari. Now there's the family of the priests. There's a priest class coming up in the tribulation period. There's a priest class coming up in the millennium. They ain't the guys that put their tags on backwards. They're going to be of Levi and the sons of Levi. But not all these Levites we just read, these three, these three brothers, not all of them are going to be priests, but only Aaron. But the Levitical priesthood, uh, you've probably heard that, that's the chosen tribe of all the 12 tribes of Israel. And out of the chosen tribe, God chose Aaron. And Aaron's two sons. No one else. Exodus 6.18 
So, they came to John the Baptist saying, John, we want to see your credentials. So you have no problem to go to a Catholic priest and say, I want to see your credentials. And when you show me your credentials, you better show me a Bible, because it's the Bible we're reading about the priest, isn't it? You know what the Catholic Church has done? They've stolen the promises of the Jewish people. And they'll say, God's all finished with the Jewish people, and it's us. No, you better watch out. God said, I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. Don't even make a joke about the Jewish people. Now, you want a good joke, and I'm Polish, you make good, there are great Polish jokes out there. I am completely Polish. I enjoy them. I love hearing Polish jokes. I wouldn't even mess around with a Jewish person. I'd watch out. You know somebody who's Jewish, I wouldn't even say anything. For a while, you know, I watch Jewish beauty. That's my law court. That's my, that's my law degree. I would say things about Judge Judy. I'm like, man, lady, you're just... And I found out she was Jewish. Like, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't know she was Jewish. I didn't know she was one of your children. I, I, I sent that woman a gospel there. For Jewish. Don't mess with the Jews. Those are God's people. Now, uh, Exodus chapter 6, verse 18. The sons of Kohath. Now, this is the sons of Levi. Ready? Amram, Izar, Hebron, Ezra. And the years of the life of Kohath were 133 years. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of years. Now, pay attention to Amram. That's an important name, Amram. Numbers 26, 59. We're looking at the family of Levi. Number uh, X, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Leviticus number. Thank you. Leviticus, uh, numbers twenty six fifty nine. And what we're doing is we're looking at the family of Levi. So what you can do one day, you can say. Somebody said, hey, the Levites. They talk about the Levites, the priests. Hey, you know what we did one time? We looked at the family of the Levites. This is the priest. This is God's priest. Numbers 2659. As soon as I find it. Ready? The name Amram. Verse 58. Kohath begat Amram. Everybody say, watch out for, for Amram. Here we go. Ready? I'm going to give you a biblical knowledge here that many Christians don't have. Here we go. Ready? The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed. Amram is married to Jochebed. Two important names. The daughter of Levi. So this is a Levitical family. Whose mother bared Levi in Egypt. This is Jochebed. Ready? And she bared Amram, her husband. This is the children she gave to Amram. Joshua and Amram. Aaron and Moses and Miriam. There's Moses' parents. Moses had a, had a brother named Aaron and they had a sister named Miriam. There you are. That's Moses' family. You just learned the family of Moses. And they're of Levi. And many Christians will never know that. Aaron, who is going to be chosen, who is chosen and will be chosen, the priest of God, is brothers with Moses. And now from Aaron we set forth the family. Aaron is the high priest at the time till we die. First Chronicles 6 3. And when people say, Oh, I don't read the Old Testament. Man, you're missing much. Grab the kings. Uh, Chronicles 6 3. You know what we're looking at right now, many churches don't even look at? Because they stay in that. Well, who are the priests in Matthew? 
Well, we're looking them up. First Chronicles 6 3. The children of Amram, there he is Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. The sons of Aaron, the high priest, Nadab and Abihu. Now, I don't remember. Those who walked in the holy place and they had their own incense, they lit their own fire, and God, you're gone. They died. They died without children. And then Eliezer and his father. The high priest passes from Aaron to Eliezer. And Eliezer's son. The whole line is Aaron and Eliezer. That is the Levitical priesthood. Right there. The high priest. Deuteronomy 10.6. That to the left. Numbers Deuteronomy 10.6. Say, well, this is not important. Well, when you get to heaven, and if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you will get to heaven. When Eliezer comes and says, Hey, I'm on. How you doing? Hey, I learned about you. Bible study, right? You're the high priest. You just learn names that are in the Bible. Not only are they in the Bible, but these, the ones we're looking at, they're in heaven. A lot better than a bunch of guys who hit a ball or throw a ball, isn't it? Sports or acts. These are names that God says are in my scripture. These are men chosen by God. Shouldn't they be taught? Shouldn't they be learning about? Deuteronomy 10 6. And the children of Israel took their journey from Beria, the children of Jachin to Mazare, and Aaron died, and there he was buried, and Eleazar his son ministered the priest's office and said, so when Aaron died, it passes on to Eleazar. And when Eleazar died, the chosen, his firstborn son, it passes on to him. And then when Eleazar's son died, it passes on to him. So a guy that stands up and says, I'm the priest, you better be of these or you ain't no priest. Ask him, are you a, the very first question you need to all right, are you a priest? Alright. Here, here, there's a simple question asked that priest. Are you Jewish or are you Gentile? I'm a Gentile. <clears throat> You're not a priest. The priest is Jewish. You know what they'll come back and say to you? Like Sammy Davis Jr. I'm a spiritual Jew. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Says Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. That's how they do it. Tell me, David, do it. Oh, I'm a spiritual Jew. I don't do it. They're just trying to steal the promises. So, when, when we're, where we are in John, the priests come up and say, Who do you think you are? Now, why is that important? These are the men that, that are of the family of Aaron and they're questioning a man of God, John the Baptist, and who you are. You see what's already happening? Already the chosen people of God are going against God. And Isaiah, we'll learn later, Isaiah is speaking about the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Not only did they reject Jesus, but they also rejected John. They had the scriptures. They know what's going on. They were already outright rejecting them. So what I'm teaching you in the Bible is the priests that come up and they're going to start harassing John and they're going to start harassing Jesus. I just ran their, gene their genealogy. I ran it all the way back to Moses and Aaron, the first high priest. God chose that family. And they're saying, God, that's bad. I'd be like somebody, let's say you're born of a father, and he's rich, he's wonderful, he's great, okay? And you're like, yeah, you're a loser. I don't want anything to do with you. You know, that's what the priests are doing with God. 
And God chose them and God adopted them. To, hey, I want you to stand the gap between your brothers and me, like Jesus. I'm going to speak through you and you're going to take their offerings. You're going to take their tithe. And you're going to take care of that, that tabernacle. You're going to serve me. And then when John the Baptist comes up and Jesus comes up, these are the ones that say, crucify him. You see, you see, we're starting off, you know, we're going verse by verse, we're taking forever, okay? But when we get to the part where the, where the chief priests tell Pilate, crucify him, crucify him. These are the men we're talking about. They are of the family of, of Aaron. God said, I want you to be the priest. So don't be surprised when we're in the church age and Christians are testifying against God. Christians are testifying against other Christians. It's happening now in the first, the first chapter of John. The ones chosen by God are turning against God. What, what's the best words that Solomon said? There's nothing to do under the sun. We're in that church age today. We're right now. They're testifying against God. People will tell me, you ought not to be doing what you're doing. Why? It's what the Bible says to them. It does. Ought you to know? Well, if there's anybody supposed to know who Jesus was, it would be the ones we just read about. They're coming up and giving John, where's your credentials? Where's you guys knowing the scriptures? See, John the Baptist can walk up and say, okay, here's Isaiah. That's my credential. But they're supposed to know that. So Aaron's seed are the priests. Back to John 1.20. And you don't have to know the exact name, but just know that Aaron is a priest. And every time we mention the priests of Israel, run it back to Aaron. And Moses. So if they keep... If Christians give you a hard time, the Jewish people gave Jesus, who is Jewish, a hard time. Nothing new under the sun. Christians have stabbed me in the back because I'm a Christian. Well, guess who put Jesus on that cross? Jewish people. Nothing new under the sun. Christians outright reject the Bible. The Jewish people rejected the Bible. I told, I, I told Brother Ron, I, I, said, I said, read Jeremiah. And John, he, wow! Man, Jeremiah, that's what's going on today. History repeats itself. When men don't learn from history, they don't learn at all. That's amazing. And Christians don't know that. It's sorry. John 1.20 And he, John the, John the Baptist, confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. So, John outright tells him, you know what they came looking for? What did he say? I'm not the Christ. Why would he say that? Because they're looking for Jesus. Well, maybe not the name Jesus. They're looking for that Messiah. They know as soon as John shows up, Scripture's going, Scripture's happening right before our eyes. Does that not sound familiar? Is there not Scripture fulfilling in front of our eyes today? And are not Christians like... <sighs> We're reliving it over again. It's sad. But Christ will be rejected in John and all the gospels. And they know who He is. Christians today who live by the book and do what the book says, 
they're going to be rejected by Christians who want to know the book. And, and it's a sad thing that Paul even writes, and Peter writes, and John writes. There will be Christians coming to a point they will turn their Christian brethren over to be slandered, to be lied about, and to be killed. The fathers against the children, the children against the fathers, the mothers against the daughter-in-law, the daughter-in-law. That's exactly what they did in Jesus' time. That's exactly what they did in the apostles' time. And their name is in the book. And their names in the book, they're going against names that are in the book. Ain't nothing new under the sun. And Jesus tried to teach them. But they wouldn't listen. I try to teach people. And they get mad at me. They get angry at me. They de-church me. They, get, they kick me out of their church. They don't want to have fellowship with me. They don't want to be my friend. Well, why is he hanging out with that crowd? That's exactly what they said about you. Jesus hanging out with the, public, with the publicans and the sinners. Because you don't want them. And he'll go to the crowd that will be with him. He'll go with the crowd that wants him. And he'll go with the crowd that will listen to him. Tell me, go up to some good church and say, listen, I know a man that believes in the King James Bible. Man, he'll, he'll tell you the scripture. He'll preach hell. He'll preach hellfire. He'll preach damnation. He'll preach the word of God. Can I have him in our church service next Sunday? No. Absolutely not. And I've had people at the, at the I street preach. I have people come up to the front. I'm going to, tell, I'm going to ask my preacher about you. I'm like, oh, good. I could just imagine the lies are going to come out. I met a guy who preaches Jesus, preaches hell. Well, you know, he's, he's one of them weird ones. Did Jesus preach? Did we not just read Jesus say, when you look at me, you see God? Do I not tell you, when you look at Jesus, you see God? Can you imagine what Jehovah Witnesses go back and tell their Jehovah Witnesses? I met this guy who said, Jesus is God and calls us what? What do you think they say? Ron, he did it. Ron, they, they called out the elders on him. <laughs> they brought the guys with the big guns. Too bad they didn't know how to fire them. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with Ron, man. He can give, he holds his ground. You know why? Because he's got the book and they don't. I can get them with their own scriptures, their own perverted Bible. I know where to go and turn the place in their perverted Bible. They say, okay, what's your Bible says the same thing I can say. So it's quite interesting that when we set forth here, I mean, we only got two verses done, but I'm not in a rush. We have set the stage that God is Jesus according to the scriptures. I disarmed, I disarmed Ron, I disarmed Louise, if you meet, if you meet any Jehovah Witnesses, I remember John chapter 1, I remember John chapter 4, let's go at it. And then, well, no he's not. Bye bye. I don't want to deal with it, bye bye. I know. And God will be happy with you because you know and you both believe, I'm God. Glory to God. You did what you were supposed to do. And now we set forth a stage. Now I'm when we and we're going to see the priest come up all the time. When we look at the priest and we study the priest. Hey, I don't remember exactly what style he said, but Moses and Aaron. And even go back to just Moses and Aaron. That's, those are God's chosen people. And you're going to think, well, ought they not known better? Yeah. And then you're going to look at yourself, and when you go out witnessing, and you come across Christians, they call you a fruitcake, and they, and they mm -hmm. wait a minute. Isn't that what God's people did to God, Jesus? Now, you put God and Jesus together, and God's people went after God, who's Jesus. And I, I think it's funny, because when I go preaching on the street, and people come to my face, and Christians tell me, oh, you know, you're driving people away, I say, you know what? Sometimes I tell, sometimes I tell, you just proved the Bible to me. Because that's exactly what the people were supposed to know. That's what they did to Jesus. Or another thing I tell them, well, that, 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 people, that, that turns people off. I'll tell them, you have to study the Bible. And they'll come up to 
mean, it'll say, and this, this is the best one. That's not what Jesus would do. I'd say, you need to go read your Bible. I'll say, say, don't you know that we're in Daytona Beach, Florida? Yeah. Do you know that Jesus preached on the beach? He got out in the boat, sat down in the boat, and preached to the people. Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. They don't even know. They don't even realize, you know, it ought not be preaching a hellfire preacher. Jesus is the first original hellfire preacher. Or maybe John the Baptist. And the Pentecostals got wrong. I won't be baptized with the, with, the, with, the, with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Holy Spirit, or it's either the Holy Spirit or it's hell. He's preaching about hell. And then, you know, the charismatic, they go flipping their, their, their head. Uh, you don't know the Bible. And many Christians will not sit underneath. Hey, we got a roof in case it rains. I love it. We don't have stained glass windows. We don't have carpeting. We got a picnic table. We can't do that. Jesus sat on a mountain and preached. Paul sat on a mountain and preached. On a beach. We're living out the Bible right now. There is no church building. We are the church. It's our job to pray for each other. It's our job to look out for each other. It's my job that God gives me to train us. Uh, I didn't train myself, believe it or not. We go out there and realize we got the death, we got the, a battlefield. We don't pull out our guns and go bang, 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 bang. We pull out the Bible and said, Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. It's a sword. We're in a battlefield. I'm telling you right now, ever since Tracy died and my pastor backed me up on it, the devil is attacking my family. He's attacking me all out. Rachel just said today in the car, how come he's attacking us on Friday again? Because he's trying to get the Bible study up and trying to get the Word of God out. The devil does not have it. Listen, I woke up some night since Tracy's died. And I was outright to have the devil just curse God for his word. Me. I've, I've had the devil doubt the word of God. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one circumstance right now with the devil. He doesn't, the devil, the devil says, does the Bible say, now remember the devil went to Jesus, does the Bible say? Okay, I'm at this point. That nothing shall be impossible with God. Doesn't the Bible say that? Yes. Yeah. Save your life, they're dead, aren't they? You try that at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're upset. Lord God, I'm sorry for that thought. I'm going to go with the Word of God, I'm going to fight even stronger. I, I, you know, I really, I want to go home. I want to go home to you, the Lord. But He still has use of me. My new, I got a new memory verse right now, Philippians 1 23 24. I got a brand new one now. I haven't learned it completely, but I'm in Christmas scene too. I'd rather be home with the Lord. I haven't heard the verse yet. I'm working on it, but it is more needful me to be here. And as you guys are joining me, for, I want the Lord, if He's going to use I want the Lord to have put a life in my family, in my life again. I need that help. I need a, I need a help. Because the battlefield I've got, I don't get to. I'm not saying I'm doing this for a spot on my back. If you want to go, I need to help me to say, you did a good job. Churches have not been there. Both my wives have been there for me to help me, straighten me up. I need them. But, I woke up, to, I told people, and I used to ask them, I was, uh, sorry, I woke up Saturday, uh, I went to Farmer's Market Saturday, I said, you know, I said, you better thank God you woke me up this morning, because I woke up to be here with you guys. And yeah. And when God finished with me, He's either going to move or He may not have me wake up. When I don't wake up, He's done it. Or He may move. But let's get to the fact this right now, that Jesus is God. And the ones that gave Jesus a hard time were the people that ought to know better. The ones that are going to give us the hard time, they ought to know better. Or they do know. Listen, another reason why they attack us is because they're supposed to be doing what we're doing. They want to be friendly. They 
want both. And they won't join the fight because they won't join. Because the Bible says marvel not at the world hate me. And listen, let me tell you something about that verse. Not only does the world hate me, but I got Christians and pastors that hate me. That's the Bible. I love the word of God. Me too. And if I'm wrong, which I don't believe I am, I'm going to face Jesus one day and we'll hear something. I, I'm working on the Christian right now. And unless he gets right, and he's trying to get right, but he wants, he wants to be friends with the world. And every time he takes a jab at me, man, I can I think fuck. I don't give up until you tell me to give up. You tell me, listen, shut up and don't like that. I've had many do that with me. I pray for them. But we're in a battle. We're in the last, and I don't know how, when I say last days, I have no idea how long those last days are. But we're in the last days. And I try, I'm trying to tell these Christians, America is not going to stay in America. America is nowhere to be found in the Bible. Churches are closed, but churches are closed, but abortion clinics have been open. And all this money, you know, this government money, some of it's going to abortion clinics. Huh. You think God's going to bless America? See, I don't go with that. God bless America. I don't. That ain't me. Paul, I mean, Rod knows. I'm not one of them. I don't vote. I agree. The ones that vote get mad. I got one right now doing battle with me. I'll win. You better know the Bible before you do it and do battle with me. Like I like did. The stuff I just did wrong about Easter. I know churches hate me because of that. My Facebook page, I can pull it. The last one I did. I put, I definitely put all my resources on Tamer. The second one, I, I put all, at the end of the pages, I put all the places where I found my information. Which I read first. You know what? You know. They both run it together, man. I was shocked. Huh? When I did Tamer, I, I was shocked to find Eskar. I didn't know that. Eskar. Easter. Easter. Remember, don't be. Go around people, take them back, say, Happy Easter Day. I do that at Walmart. <laughs> They'll say, Well, Happy Easter. I'm like, No, it's Easter. Go home and Google it. The statue of Jesus. Fred. It looks like Little Ray. Well, say, Happy Resurrection Day. That's not even Resurrection Day. <laughs> Easter, Easter is pagan Roman. Easter has nothing to do with the Bible. It's Roman. And it only appears once in the Bible. That's it. Really? And it's either that Easter or it's Passover. Passover. Mm -hmm. That's it. Don't ever Passover. have nothing to do with Easter. Oh. I told Rachel, I said, if I did have a wife, Lord gave me one, I'll let her have Christmas. I ain't giving her Easter. Mm -hmm. And if she wants to have a Christmas tree, she's going to have to have the Nightingale bush. Great tail book. I'll do that much. Inside or outside? I can form it. I mean, it's not going to go to hell. But Easter, you know something about Easter? Yeah. And that table is runs in the Christmas, too. Yeah. Started reading it yet? But, um, Easter, all these holidays have nothing to do with God at all. You know Halloween, though. But see, people are afraid of Halloween. Christmas and, and, and Easter are more because the church is going to rock it. This is church Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah. You don't have the egg hunt. Well, they didn't have it this year because of coronavirus. I go around and get them all upset. I said, they'll have their egg hunt. I say, how's your little sperm doing? What? Your children, how's your sperm doing? What are you talking about? Aren't you sending those sperm out to go look for eggs? 
<laughs> See why people hate me? I walk up to if I see a Catholic priest, I say, your shirt's on back here. Mm -hmm. Get the guy in front. I want to say something, oh, I'm holy, I'm your father. I, I love when they say, I'm your father, how many children you got? None. <laughs> how did you do that? Or I'll say, how many, how many Father's Day cards do you get in June? I get done. You're not a father. Uh, I don't even let my children call me father. My son's 20 years old. He still calls me daddy. That's just cute. I got a letter from Jeff. Daddy. Okay. <laughs> oh, my now I say father, but like, this is my father, or I'll, I'll bring the phone to my father. Oh, okay. That's what you mean. Now I know something. God is good. And he sent me two wives that were good and listened to him. Father, 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 father. I know. He does a great work with his ear and everything. You want me to shut this off? I woke up like, Lord, I don't want to. I do not want to go to the You want me to shut this off? Yes. All right.